start from the top to the very last drop. drop, 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 drop. Yes, the sad thing is about like this big, right? Just the, the normal little sad things that we would go in the shop and buy, right? And we used to stick a tube on, on, on top of it and turn it into a preamp, you know, as invention. You know, the mic that I used to use was a, li a little mic, it's about like this. That was what fascinated people as well, because they used to say that they hear me talking and they didn't see the mic. They just see my hand like this, right? <laughs> and people used to say, where is the mic? You know, because some of the big sounds, and they got big mics, you know, like the big sounds, like um, Joe Creed and Coxon, they would have mics like a studio mic, right? But my mic was just a little round, round thing, but it's very sensitive. And what sort of things would you be saying into your mic? Let me hear some of the things you'd be coming out with in your mics. Well, um, for instance, if I would be advertising a, um, a dance or, you know, introducing a record, you know. So the spotlight now shines on the brother called Delroy Wilson, right? And so version one or version two, you know. And next week, Saturday night, all road lead to the place called Chisholm Avenue. There and then you'll be dancing to El Paso Wi-Fi. So you make it a date and don't be late, because this night is going to be great. Something like that, too. <laughs> so you're getting this stuff right here. Is Uroy a big influence? Yes, he's a big influence, definitely. Yes, yes. And you, you recorded Keith Hudson first, don't you? Yes, Keith Hudson was my first producer, just like um, Uroy, you know. And um, Keith Hudson actually gave Big Youth his first big hit as well, S90 Skank, you know, so he's a big part of the business, you know. Keith Hudson, the ghetto dentist, you know, because he's dentist by trade, you know. Yeah, he's a big influence in my life, you know, because I remember when I was um, recording with him, he, he made me open my first bank account. He took me to the bank, you know. He, take me to King Street and buy my first stage gear. You know, so he was a good guy, you know, Keith Hudson. So you had a bank account, does that mean you made money through with him? I was hoping to. Yeah. <laughs> now in those days, you never really make any, any money of such, you know, you just live, you know. But we went into the business because of the love that we have for it. You know, we didn't look at it as a business. We definitely didn't. You know, we didn't know about publishing and all those things, you know. I didn't hear about those things until I started traveling out of Jamaica. You know, we would get a little money from the producers, you know, not much, right? I think the man that um, actually paid me some money was Joe Creed, you know, okay, he wasn't too bad. But how much would you get for doing a, a tune with him? I can't remember one time I, I did a song called, for him called Teacher, Teacher Children. And when I came downstairs, he was there waiting on me with a, a, a <laughs> bungle of five shilling notes. <laughs> he didn't give me ten shilling notes, he didn't give me pound notes, he gave me five shilling notes to make it look plenty. You know, and. <laughs> To me, it looks like a, a, a lot of money at the time, you know. Um, but after that, I used to work on a weekly basis with him. He used to pay me weekly, you know, me and um, my sidekick, Lizzie. How much did he pay you? You know, I can't remember half an at the moment, you know, how much we used to get a week. But we were living, you know, because as, as you, you mentioned, it was pound children and pence at the time. You know, um, you didn't get anything to go out and buy um, a car, you know, or a transport at the time. But you would get something because when we, when we go into it, we weren't looking for anything, you know, because we went into it for the love of it, you know. And as youths, when you hear your record playing on the radio, 
it, it's a great feeling, you know. So we didn't know until afterward. Now we realized that we are living and people are making money, and we ain't making none. You know, my eyes were open when I came to England on my first tour in 1973, because I didn't, I did not know that my records was going outside of Jamaica, right? I didn't think further than Jamaica. You know, when I came to England, I even see an album coupled up with me and you, I called Version to Version. Children put that out. You know, I wasn't aware of that. You know, so I see a different side of the business when I came here. And I realized now that there is money to be made from the business. You know, and that's when I joined up with um, PRS and MCPS and started to ask, it, ask for some money from the producers, you know. Coming from the top of the mountain, the man called Cassius Clay is back again, you know. I work with every producer. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie Lee is my good friend, you know. Yeah, I do a lot of work with Bonnie, yeah. Striker, yeah. Yes, the great striker Lee. Yeah. Yeah. You all right? Bonnie's all right in his own way, you know. We, we, we are brethren, you know. Um, I, I don't look at Bonnie as um, a producer to artist kind of relationship. I look at him as a friend, you know. We can. We, we rap all the time, you know. Bonnie will call, call me 10 times for the day and vice versa, you know. When he's in Jamaica, he's calling me three, four, five o'clock in the morning, you know, and don't have much to say in this one. But that's a striker, you know. But apart from that, um, Coxon, I was still the one. Um, when I left um, Keith Hudson, I went to Coxon. Um, when I was working, recording for Keith Hudson, I recorded with my original name, Dennis Smith. And when I went to Stida One, I tell Coxon to call me Dennis Al Capone, because Al Capone was, was my um, pet name, alias. And everything more or less took off from that, you know, because I had number, number six tune in, in the chart with Keith Hudson. A Spanish Amiga. Now this will give the privilege to come back and stay. But any old way, baby, any old way. But not in too old-fashioned way. Oop, line and sinker. Oop, back, Spanish Amiga. When I went to Studio One now and I started working at Studio One, then I was a bit worried because he sent called me and asked me if you were I was helping me to do my songs. You know, I said, no, Mr. Reader, um, it's all about me. You were I didn't help me to do any of these songs, you know. Because he was convinced that you or I was helping me at Studio One, you know, but nothing like that. I remember when I made my first record for Studio One, and um, I was downtown parade by Randy's record shop. And this guy in, 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 a, in a pickup truck, he was going my way, and um, he offered me a lift. And there was about four other guys on the back of the truck. And on, on our way up to Walton Park Road, one of them commented, did you hear you write a new song? So the other one said, no. He said, yeah, man, this song, wicked, man. You have a new tune out. The guy said, what do you call it? He said, nanny version. You know, I'm thinking, but that's my song. <laughs> but they didn't know who I was, you know. And Mr. Reed was convinced that you were actually helped me on the record as well, but... It was me alone. So when you, had, you been, had you been to England before you toured here? No. Um, the first time I came here was 1973 on a tour. How did you find it here? Um, amusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, like I say, I, I did not know that people were aware of Dennis Al Capone in England. You know, it was a shock to the system, you know, but I was enjoying it at the same time, you know, because um, when I went on stage and started to, 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 to work, people were singing my songs, you know, and I was saying, what? You know, yeah. Every song I, I, I started doing, I hear the audience singing it. So I realized that there's something happening here and it isn't exactly clear. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I think I did about six weeks in England and then I went back to, to Jamaica. Wake up, Jamaica! I came back up, this was 73, I came back up 74 um, with the Jamaica show, showcase with um, Toots on the Metals, um, Cynthia Richards, a guy called Al Brown, he had a hit, Here I Am Baby at the time, and um, a young Dennis Brown, um, and also a young Sly, mm. because Sly was coming here for the first time, so was Dennis Brown and that tour. And um, Sly was working with a band called Skin, Flesh and Bone, right? The bass player in the band was Light Parks, you know, and um, you have Ranchi and Tarzan and a couple of those guys was in the, that band. Dennis Brown, it was the first trip for Dennis Brown as well to England, you know, that showcase, you know, and um, while we were here, this promoter called Admiral Ken, he come and select me and Dennis Brown from the package and put us with Desmond Decker for a, a big show in Leicester Square, the Empire Ballroom. And um, the night Bob Marley came, you know, Bob, Bob and um, Family Man, Carly, and there was a boxer in England at the time called Bonnie Sterling. He was with them as well. You know, they came and I, while I was performing, I called Bob onto the stage and introduced him to the crowd. You know, I've got the picture still at home. You know, but because I was a star on the night, the guy took Bob, he didn't took Bob frontal, he took me frontal and Bob back way. Yeah, so that's how I've got, I've got the picture now with me and Bob. I'm looking at Bob and introducing him to the crowd. Was this before Natty Dread or after Natty Dread? This was when he did the Catch a Fire album. Oh, just that? Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes. This was his... his sure. Yeah, so I, I played a part in promoting Bob in England. You know? Yeah. But you moved here? I went back down from that tour. I went back to Jamaica. And um, I came back up 1975. I went back down and came back up 76 and got married. And um, since then I've been back with them for but mostly here, living in East London. My area in East London. Yes, and Steve said to me, you're Dennis Al Capone, ain't you? I said, yeah. So we chat and he's saying that he would love to do some, some filming with me, you know, 